Happy New Year, podcast listeners. Welcome to the Jimmy Curve. It is 2015. This is our first show of the new year. We're really excited. It's going to be a lot of fun today. We've got a lot going on. I am your host, Jimmy Putnam. With me, as always, are co-hosts, two guys. Ah, now I have to talk and I wasn't ready. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Will Doherty, I want my name to be on it. They don't They don't like it when I surprise them. And Joshua Vossler. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. We're off and running. Uh, let's just uh, get right into it today. Thanks to everybody for listening to the show. Thank you for downloading. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. You know the drill. Uh, do we have anything coming up? Joshua, this show is being released on... Thursday, uh, January 8th on January 13th, which is a Tuesday, you are on Missing Kitten. Yeah, Pizza Shop Collective, 8 o'clock in Omaha. Oops. (laughs) No, it's okay. I hit hit the plug drop early. That's my bad. (laughs) Uh, Coincidentally, since that show is at the Pizza Shop, I was also asked to do that show, and I will do it, assuming I can get someone to cover for me at my pizza job. (laughs) We'll see. Uh, When this show comes out on January 8th, that will be a Thursday. Also, go check out the new open mic in Lincoln at Dugan's Pub. Sign-ups are at 9 o'clock. That will be hosted by our good friend Andrew Hannes. Uh, It's going to be a fun show. Hopefully, everybody goes out to see that. Uh, I am on an improv team called Words with Friends with Benefits, and we just set up a deal where we're going to be performing the third Thursday of every month at the Backline Improv Theater. This month, that will be the 15th. Come see us at the Backline Improv Theater in Omaha, Nebraska at 1618 Harney Street. This uh, Thursday, the 15th, and the third Thursday of every month going forward. It's your... Oh, and also uh, Runza has a promotion. <laughs> you wanna... um, before we talk about Runza, I insist that you find the fast foodie drop. I didn't know this was going in the plug segments, but uh, <laughs> I would just, I would like to... St- Uh, Thank our sponsor for this week, uh, a Nebraska institution, Runza Restaurants, uh, with their uh, current promotion, the Temperature Tuesdays, where the price of a Runza is the temperature at 6 a.m. every Tuesday, which I ate twice today. (laughs) What was the price of a Runza today? Uh, It was six cents. No. (laughs) Uh, what is that, 0. 0.06 degrees? I don't understand. No, it was does... six degrees. <laughs> oh, it's, it's six oh, it's cents. cents. You have to buy, you have to buy a uh, fries and a drink with it in order to get your six cents run. I was going to say, the question but, is, is how did he only not, or how did he only eat two of them well, when I, they're it, six cents? I thought it was going to be dollars where it was like, if it's one degree, it's one dollar. If it's two degrees, I don't know how much yeah. a Runza costs. Sorry, I <laughs> don't eat at Runza a lot, but hey. Six cents runs us. You can't go wrong with that. Uh, I mean, the, yeah. So the combo with like the fries and the drink, it's like three oh six to so, get your uh, to get your combo. So thank you to our sponsor, Runza, feeding the sad and homeless since <laughs> January first of twenty fifteen. <laughs> let's 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 get to our guests. We have a shitload of them today. They are the hosts of Bitter Rival Podcast live from the Smokehouse. <laughs> Uh, they are Daniel Young. Say hello. Hello, everybody. Andrew Hannes. What's going on, everybody? Oh, one clap. And <laughs> hey, well, let's just all do a simultaneous clap for each of them. Daniel Young, <laughs> Andrew Hannes, <laughs> and a half clap for sometimes host Kent Maslowski. Co-host. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Is Kent on every show? I don't... I. I'm unclear uh, about this. Most of them. The basically, we only have four mics. Did, was this so, not settled between you until just now? No. The thing <laughs> is, is, no, no. The thing is, we have four mics. So if we have okay. two guests, we don't. There's not enough mics. Right. So gotcha. Cool. All right. Well, uh, welcome to the Jimmy Curve, everybody. You. you guys. Now you guys do your podcast live. Right. Yeah. Live on Monday. Is it every Monday? It's at- kind of depending on the guest. We either we've right. been doing Sundays or Mondays, you know, kind of depending on Cool. That I think it would be best if we just did it every Monday, but Li- recording a live podcast seems like a, a big headache to me. <laughs> it is, dude. You have <laughs> no idea. Tell yeah. me about that. How's that working out? 
Uh, it's, I mean, it's getting easier each time, but you know, there's like, I think this week we were like getting kicked off at first. So it's like, sometimes there's some things you got to get past to get, I think with Josh is we're having a uh, signal inf like interference with the signal. This is like a bunch so, of technical shit. Mm -hmm. Right. And then yeah. once you've done the show, you don't know it's something was wrong until you listen to it later because right. it was live. Right. So you can't really check while you're doing it. You know what I mean? Which right. is a shame because I was awesome. No, I was, <laughs> but no one, no one ever knew. No one no. will ever know. I mean, but, that's part of just the whole deal with doing like we're all just sort of learning how to do this. I right. mean, we've had when we did our episode with Dusty. We did 45 minutes of the show and then Audacity crashed mm. and like we lost all of it. So oh, shit. we had to completely start over from the beginning. And that was only our third or fourth show or something. So we it was so we, we started out trying to just recreate all of the stuff that we had done before. Yes. And that went horribly. Uh, and then I think Dusty Stell just ended up beatboxing for like 10 minutes. And that, was, <laughs> that ended up being the show. But really? yeah, it's I mean, it's a good idea. Is he good? <laughs> it was okay. I mean, check out the episode of the Jimmy Curve that he's on. He's our intro music is Dusty beatboxing. <laughs> nice. uh, so yeah, it was pretty fun. Um, I, but it, go ahead. I, well, I was gonna say I feel like the thing that would really like mess with me with like having a having a show that goes out live would be that like. You can't unsay the dumb shit that right. you say totally when it true. goes on live. Like exactly. I have to, I try to filter myself a little bit, but I mostly just let it go and be like, "Jimmy will take it out if it's too bad." Like, yeah. if I get any really awful shit, I'll be like, "I'm not putting this out," and I'll be like, "You're probably right." <laughs> yeah, uh, that hasn't come up very often. But it has happened. Right, right, right. <laughs> I say. So that is kind of, you know, one of the things about it, like going live. It's stressful at first, like the first few minutes, you're like, oh shit. Mm. And you're all like, but then after a while, we just don't care. We, we, we're we kind of like the opposite of the Jimmy Curve, where like <laughs> you guys are so structured and we're the uh, complete opposite of that. <laughs> right. It's, it's no really, structure at all. <laughs> We've tried. We, when, when I set up the structure, it yeah. fails miserably. So I we've just kind of been like, fuck it. You know, like for 45 minutes, we just do free form. We just talk. Something comes up. We talk about it. If you know what I mean. And then at the end, we kind of do our like plugs and well, whatever. no matter how much I try and plan out our shows, we ended up doing that same shit, too. I mean, right. there's no way to avoid that. Yeah. Once you yeah. start talking, it's kind of hard not to just follow the conversation. Yeah. And right. sometimes someone will say something. We're like, you know, there's no way we would even have talked about that if we were sticking to our format. And then right. we would have missed this funny ass conversation or this interesting conversation or whatever. So. Yeah. 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 That, that's going to be, that's always going to be part of it. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it is interesting because every, I mean, podcast, podcasting in general is such a new art form. No one really knows the correct way to do it. Like when you're doing, a sitcom there's a certain way it has to happen like there's a producer there on set telling you if you don't have a, a comic beat this many seconds every this many seconds yeah. you're gonna lose your audience there's a way to do podcasting there's no really way to do it. it's like my whole theory with it is i always try and uh give people things that they can relate to more right. so than just trying to be entertaining because uh, in comedy you can't force you can't make yourself be funny. You can try your best, you know, and mm -hmm. sometimes you're going to be funny. Sometimes you're not, but there is a lot of stuff you can control. And that's always kind of my theory is like, if I control those things, if I make sure that the sound quality is good mm -hmm. and that, you know, there are there, when people listen to morning radio, they're used to hearing certain things. And if I put some of that stuff in there, it's going to be familiar enough that even if the jokes aren't funny, like, people will still not be annoyed with it. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> but I fucked that up by putting Will on as co-host. <laughs> so that went out the window. Well, podcasting is really weird, too, because it's like the best part about it is also kind of the worst part where it's like there's so many podcasts that you can choose to whatever you like. But then right. there's so many podcasts. There's no way you could listen to everything every single one right there's no way like i right. mean i love podcasts but i can't keep up with them yeah there you know are a I bunch mean? of shit I there's used to so many to that i just yeah I've, it's impossible almost. they didn't do anything wrong i just stopped listening to them because yeah. i had other things that i was listening to exactly yeah so, that's why i expect to lose all of my listeners within <laughs> the next year so 
Please don't <laughs> abandon us, everybody. <laughs> uh, so, Guess great. What? WTF, they don't need you, okay? <laughs> we need you. You click download once, we notice. Oh, <laughs> right. Matt, I do obsessively look at the regional downloads where they're from like, oh, somebody in Maryland. That was <laughs> that must have been an accident, but I'm, I'm happy for it. Well, that's also cool about your guys is where like it seems like you guys get traffic from all over where like ours is more like, we have to sit like you kind of have to know about us to find us. If you don't right. know about our podcast, you're not finding it. So right. with yours, it's like on an actual podcast website. We go live on YouTube, right? So, but like that's badass. Like but I like that it's, about it's, it's an accident. Like I think I think it's just some data mining thing that's happened. Like we don't. No one's really listening in Thailand. Shut up, that's, Jimmy. <laughs> that's sorry, not, sorry. That, Kenichi that watch Japan. Yeah, people like us. People like me. Shut up. <laughs> uh, okay, great. So uh, now that we have the entire cast of the Smokehouse live in one place, Jimmy Curve, attack! Oh, oh, oh. Ambush. That's like I'm you're... still alive. Just so everyone knows. <laughs> yeah, that... Nothing happened. So you're not supposed to have all of you in one location. I know. <laughs> See, one I of had... you has to remain. I had an idea that maybe these guys were just like, undercover this whole time and this was just a setup to get me here to just like kill me we're gonna have him walk in first it's gonna be like good fellas yes he's be like wait up yeah if i walked in and there was a table with a like a one of those big vices on the end like in casino yes ah well uh, now plan's blown uh, I don't mary know. put away the vice throw out the plastic wrap <laughs> see i disagree i think that we 100 percent need the smokehouse here like I think, I think of the smokehouse the way I think of myself. Anytime I'm hanging out at a bar, like I feel like as a podcast, <laughs> you're our ugly friend. Aww. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh, perception. <laughs> that was mean. love you too, Will. Thank you, Will. <laughs> that guy isn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, hey, it's 2015, let's get started talking about the new year, right? Welcome to 2015. Is it, everyone's hey. lives are different now, right? <laughs> <laughs> no? Yeah. Uh, I, it, it's, uh, it, it's weird because we didn't start, like, we started doing our podcast in, like, what, September? I don't Is know. Is that right? September, October, something like yeah. that? And you guys started uh, around the same time, yeah. October. Yeah, pretty much ish uh, yeah. yeah i think we got started on everything mid-october i think like my whole thing when i started doing this was i hope i can make it a year <laughs> and, and stay interested <laughs> and keep wanting to do it so like a third of the way there hopefully so i just have to go three quarters of the way through 2015 so i guess my new year's resolution is to keep doing that nice try what and is? try and make it a full year of podcasting because so few people do so that's kind of anybody else. Did anyone else make a New Year's resolution? Do adults really make New Year's resolutions? That's the first mm. question. I mean, you know, I'm going to say that they must because I've heard multiple people bitching about like all the New Year's resolution people clogging up their gyms. Mm. Oh, yeah. Weird, yeah, that's true, though. Which is weird because right. I didn't know I knew. Number one, I didn't know I knew that many people who went to gyms. I do. Like consistently. Have you been irritated by all the New Year's resolution people? I, I just went today and it wasn't like super crowded or anything. Huh. But I mean, my the, the gym I go to is actually always has quite a few people in it. You know what? I was there today though at like three in the afternoon, and it's usually pretty dead then. But there were quite there was quite a few people there. Maybe what gym do you go to? Uh, Prairie Life Fitness. Oh, nice. That's uh, a nice place. Yeah, it's, it's so yeah. So Jimmy fans, uh, if you're uh, if you're looking to go uh, harass your favorite host in the real world, <laughs> you, go you know where to go find him in a compromising position. So so the next time I go to the gym, like tomorrow, if I see a bunch of weird dudes looking at me in the locker room when I'm like changing clothes, I'll know it's because of uh, it, that's podcast traffic. Right, those yeah. are your fans. That's your too. reach. If you I'll, if you go get on the stairmaster and then all of a sudden. All the other Stairmasters next to you get pe people. Suddenly full. Suddenly yeah. full. Yeah. And you know you're a celebrity. That's right. It's usually I usually have the opposite effect. Oh. It's like, oh, there's a weird circle of emptiness around the machine <laughs> I'm using. Actually, it's the, the – oh, man. 
Can we talk about the gym for a second? Does anybody else go to a gym? I used to. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What the fuck is the problem with etiquette at the gym? Right. People, like, fully half of the people in a gym are, like, the kind of anti-social sociopaths yeah, who just I know what you're do talking about, not dude. give a shit about anyone else. No. Oh, my God. You mean everything I think about meatheads is true? Yes. Like, <laughs> it's, 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 it's things like... It, it, it's it's simple stuff like if you pick up a thing and use it, put it back. Right. I, dude, I know exactly <laughs> what the fuck you're talking about. What is up with people or, who just pick up a weight? They'll pick up some weights, do a set, just drop them on the ground and walk away. Yeah. go home. Like That's I, why I don't go to the gym. I remember I came up to a bench. I was like going to set up to try to do bench press. Try is the keyword. And I walk up and this big ass dude's over there doing curls. And he's like, hey, I'm using that. I'm like, dude, no, you're not. You're doing lifts over there. <laughs> right. You know, but like he was going back and forth. And for some reason, I had to sit there and wait because I didn't want to yeah, get so my it, ass kicked. Yeah, we it. have to share this shit. Yeah. It's like only one thing in the gym and there's like a bunch of people. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. See, on, on some level, I can kind of understand that instinct just because like it's not fair because it's a shared space. But I understand because like. I've been to a hotel, and that's the way I want to treat a hotel. And I feel like it's the same mindset. It's like, I don't have to clean any of this shit up. This is awesome. Yeah, I pay for this. Wreck everything and then leave. Right, but yeah. And it, it, it's different in the sense that, like, in a hotel, it is true that you're going there one time and then not going back. <laughs> yeah. but, like the Instead gym, of seeing right. the same people over the and gym, over. The gym, ideally, yeah. you're going to be back, like, three times every well, week. Right. And a gym is also a shared space. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, well, how, uh, explain this one to me. This one, this one blows my mind. And this might be me being oversensitive about personal space issues. But there, in in the locker room, there are, I don't know, three hundred and fifty lockers, and there's never more than forty of them in use. Mm -hmm. Why the fuck would you take one right <laughs> next to the one <laughs> that, that my using. lock is on yeah. or that I am currently using? That is sociopathic. I mean, yeah. it's because I, he wants you to see his dick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's Make the other thing. Sure. There's the there's the guy that walks around naked at the gym, and he always wants to talk to you with his dick hanging out. Well, first of all, everybody over sixty five is always naked, right? I mean, they just like, they're just people, washing their balls in the sink and shit. I, and you're like, I am what? really looking forward to that. There, there is just <laughs> if you go to the <laughs> gym, if you go into the locker room, there will be three dudes. Over the age of 65, just naked and just hanging out. Yep. Like, bent over a sink shaven. Yep. <laughs> it's so fucked up, man. Like, I I mean, I, I'm not super self-conscious or, like, squeamish, but, like, it just, it just is weird to me. I, I don't, know, dude. It is. I guess at a certain point, you just don't give a shit. And they yeah, go, and, and you know when that point is? After you finish beating the Nazis. <laughs> 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 All right. They earned it. They are the greatest mm -hmm. generation. Yeah, that's why reason. no one says shit to them, really, though. It's yeah. like, hey, they're old. You know, I mean, they've been through some shit. <laughs> I feel like some of them beat the Nazis, but some of them are just riding the coattails of Nazi beaters. <laughs> but how can you tell? <laughs> yeah, see, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to interrogate them. They're <laughs> hang, fucking hanging dong in front of me. I'm not going to ask them any questions. That's messed up, man. It's not as creepy if you're just looking at breasts or an ass. <laughs> True. Sounded like Corey. Hey, oh, let's Corey. hey, let's uh yeah, it was Corey. That was Corey Brewer. <laughs> That's good stuff. All right, guys, let's do a segment. The issues. <laughs> Part 2. <laughs> Nice. The future. <laughs> the we on last week's episode we talked about we gave the Jimmy Curves definitive stance on the issues of 2014. So that this year, when a topic comes up, we don't even really have to argue. We just we say, listen to last year's shows, that'll tell you everything you need to know about us. Well, I thought since we're starting off a new year, we could give our definitive stance, our take. On some of the things we expect to have to deal with moving forward this year. Future issues. For example, issue number one, flying cars. I'm assuming by the end of 2015, we will have flying cars. We'll all be flying to work in our flying cars. We've been we, It's been coming for years. You've seen it in movies, on the Jetsons. 
I, for one, am against mm-hmm. against flying cars. Okay. Joshua? Uh, I'm definitely for flying cars. I want I want one. I feel like it's... <laughs> I, I don't think there's any way to regulate that. I mean, it's just disaster hmm. waiting to happen. Will, where are you at on flying cars? Um, I believe that, like, we should have the technology... If we can have flying cars, we should have, like, Google... Like, like we have Google cars that can drive themselves. If we can get Google flying cars that can drive themselves, then I feel like most of your problems are solved. Right. So, really, I, I think that the technology should be there, so I'm going to say pro. Do right. I have to wear a seatbelt? <laughs> I'm going to say something here. They actually do have that right now. If you uh, yeah. YouTube flying cars, I'm yeah, not joking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're working on one that it basically you put in where you want to go and it flies you there and you don't do anything and it lands. And if it then it has like uh, backup parachutes that way in case it right it quits working like it, you can see not this is this is yeah. this is my biggest problem with it is if it's going to all be automated. Then why even have the cars? Like, there's got to mm-hmm. be just a totally better way of doing it. I'm thinking the Futurama tube system. I was just thinking that. <laughs> yes. Right? Like at the <laughs> bank. You just sit in right. the thing. Take you right where you want to go. Exactly. Yeah. So much like better. That. I mean, no, you're, no. A- Andrew's shaking his head. Sounds like a lot of people are going to die that way. <laughs> it really it does. works pretty good in Futurama. <laughs> well, uh, on... In the animated world, it's fine. <laughs> it uh, is. Why would there be problems? Correct. <laughs> right. Online, I seen they took a GoPro and put it in one of those tube systems and sucked it all through like some hospital in oh, Texas like that. so that you could see like what it looked like flying through the tubes. Or That's whatever. awesome. Did it look did it look super fun? It, <laughs> check it out. I mean, it, it, you could see it fucking flying fast as shit through the tubes. So, so in conclusion, that. I am tube system. Do I have to wear a seatbelt? No. Then I'm for it. Nice. You're for, for <laughs> flying cars. Yeah. Pro how about, turbulence. How about, how about tube system? Teleport. Um, do I have to wear a seatbelt? No. Mm. Then I'm for it. <laughs> I think there are seats. Will Doherty. I mean, I think this is all going to be a moot point once we invent teleporting, so. Right. <sighs> <laughs> all right. I'm. You know what? I'm pro-teleportation. Stargate. Uh, no seatbelt. No seatbelt, but I watched the movie The Fly. Mm. That, that freaked me the fuck out. That'll end well. That brings us right into our next topic moving forward. <sighs> Genetic mutations. For oh. or against? I am totally for it. I love it. I yeah. want, yeah, I want more, I want more fruit vegetables, you know? I want more, like, <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I want more protein. Hybrid in, foods? Yeah, I want more protein in my broccoli, you know what I mean? Yeah. I want half pork, I want pork, pork, pork broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pork broccoli sounds great. Uh, cast of the Smokehouse Live, genetic mutations, for or against? I'm for. Sounds good. <laughs> That's it. it sounds you're, no you're reason. Like, Check that yeah. box. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd say I'm for it. Also, I I'm, mean, and for certain things like you know, genetic mutations in people mm-hmm. to where they can fix you know gene therapy. That's what I was going to say. What it's called. I'm for genetic mutations moving forward, and the main reason is that I think the science is pretty close where we're going to be able to control them. Like random genetic mutations, I. I'm against. I'm right, against right. I mean, random genetic mutations got us this far up the food chain. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I, I guess I'm more thinking of like random forced genetic mutations via nuclear fallout and things like that. Oh, that's coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm pro that in that it will happen. <laughs> here's here's the thing, Jimmy. Uh, once the super mutant overlords take over, you don't want it to be on record that you were against mutation. That's a great point. That's a great point. Uh, so uh, the Jimmy Curve's definitive stance on random genetic mutations is yes, master. <laughs> uh, and thank you and... What, wait, can I ask a question? Yes. What happened to the gavel pounding sound effect we had from last <coughs> week? <laughs> Thank you very much, Master. Uh, we submit willingly to you, our genetic uh, superiors and mutant overlords. 
Uh, I I I will happily serve in any capacity that I'm able. I hope you like podcasts. That you see any value at all in our flimsy human bodies <laughs> is evidence enough of your grace and kindness. Yes. Yeah, yes. I'm not groveling. <laughs> uh, all right. Next topic. Josh, you got one? Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm betting on a resurgence of Zydeco music. <laughs> <laughs> against. Definitively against. Oh, we... It's just, you already decided for the whole show? No, I'm against. <laughs> okay, well, I'm obviously for it. You are for, you like Zydeco music? Mm-hmm. Really? What, once again, question? Yeah. What is a Zydeco? Uh, you know what? Give me just a second, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can find some. Uh, forgot to tell you that you were listening to the Broussard brothers, because the young man on the rub board happens to be the young man on accordion's brother. How about a nice I, I don't know what's happening. Band. I just hit Gerald Broussard. I like it. Family band. Yeah, if you don't like Zydeco music, you're racist. <laughs> it's French people. <laughs> I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit here. I I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. This. Look at the big goofy grin you have on your face, Jimmy <laughs> Putnam. This is what you're against? Is what you're against happiness? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not totally for happiness. <laughs> Fair enough. I found it weird. Will was the one Crank who asked. Crank that shit up. If you were against <laughs> happiness. <laughs> right. I, I don't know if that was a good enough uh, little taste of Zydeco, but you know, it's... Zydeco music, ranchero music, mm -hmm. you know, all, like, uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, polka music. Like, it's all fun, bouncy, happy for a little while. Yeah. I mean, it's basically elevator music. I don't know if that's true with ranchero music. I mean, it's... I don't know if it's ever fun. It has an accordion. <laughs> <laughs> Accordions are fun. Are you... Again, I must just be completely ignorant of, like all things about music ranchero is seriously a type of music yeah. and not some sort of four-wheeled suv <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah it has nothing uh, to do with dressing right right <laughs> ah ranchero music is uh, is usually what you hear playing at that authentic mexican restaurant Oh, okay. That would be ranchero. I music. like that, but that might just be because I get excited when I'm eating authentic <laughs> Mexican. <laughs> right. I mean, it's it's Pat like Lobian. it's it. All of that stuff is like background sound, but you wouldn't like go out and download it and like then listen to it in your headphones while you're at the gym. Of course, you'd have to be at a gym first, so that eliminates right. yeah, that eliminates that... four sixths of the people in the, <laughs> this room right now, but two thirds. <laughs> Two thirds. Simplify your fractions, Jimmy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I feel such shame, honestly. That was bad. Uh, well, anyways, uh, Zydeco music. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm against it making a comeback. I'm fine with it existing, but against it making a comeback. Josh, okay. you're for it? <laughs> yeah, I want more of it. You I want to I hear, ne like, Zydeco music in Kanye's West Next album, like, and he's just like, oh, yeah, shit, and then he's just like, hold on, that be may be a, what, that'll happen. Be careful what you That may be for, a man. game changer, actually. <laughs> well, he's doing, he's doing songs with Paul McCartney. Right. You know, he's going to run out of shit, Zydeco's next. <laughs> in, the, in that uh, in, in that little clip that I was playing right there, if Kanye had like run out on stage and then started rapping, I would have been fucking all for that. So you may have swayed me, Will Doherty. Uh, I would like some authentic Mexican food. <laughs> Zydeco music for it. Okay. Does the uh, Smokehouse have a take on Zydeco music? I I say it's fun, happy music. Uh, but. Uh, better than Ranchero. So I say, <laughs> I, I'm for it. No one else is talking, so I say hey, we're for you it. You guys just letting Kent decide? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, I'm for it too, but I was gonna... Yeah, sure, why not? All right. <laughs> it, it, it passes all around, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Podcasts love Zydeco music. I'm gonna lead into next week's show with some. <laughs> yes. <laughs> next issue. Uh, are we for or against robot servants? Mm. Yes. Are we are we for? Do we trust robot servants? Do are I? We, 
Do I get to have sex with this robot servant? Yes. I'm for there, it. There, that's actually a different model. There are that's robot nice. sex slaves. Mm -hmm. There are robot house servants. Okay. Are they, are they a people? I mean, do we have a data from Star Trek situation here? I don't know. I, oh, I don't care about that. I, I'm yes. Wait, is data a person? <laughs> See, it's tricky, tricky ethical ground there. I don't think data's a person. I don't either. I, I think, think he's a computer, like a and I don't like him being treated like a person. Right. Okay, <laughs> look. Here's the thing. We need to compromise. So let's say data's vote counts for three fifths. <laughs> <laughs> Issue solved. <laughs> I feel like it's fair all around. Hardly any way to uh, oh argue with that. <laughs> uh, I got to That's one the of brown the brown audience. <laughs> <laughs> the brown audience. Yeah, so that's one of those things I wouldn't say if this was live. <laughs> <laughs> it's a callback to a real Supreme Court decision. Thanks, Kent. No problem. <laughs> we don't, we don't bring it down. <laughs> Dare, For those anyone are... confused about that? <laughs> All right. Uh, next issue. All right, we're going to move on. Because I, cause I think we definitively solved that one, right? Yeah, we're good on that one. Okay. Robot Servants 4. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely 4. I, and I don't feel guilty about it. Here's the thing, like, I, it's people. definitely going to lead to our eventual, like, the eventual uprising in robot, like, uh, superiority. But as long yeah. as I'm alive during that brief window where they're still serving, like, good enough for me. Well, I, I think there's a part of this that you haven't considered, that you specifically haven't considered. Well, okay, uh, I'm listening. Robot servants are going to be one of those things that you won't be able to afford. <laughs> Fuck! I was yeah. I was kind of considering like like the robot. By the time we were at the technology for robot servants, we would like live in like a post economic society, like Star Trek: The Next Generation. Yeah, where there's no money and you just have food replicators right. and everything. We'd be post. I feel no. This I, is 2015. Right. That's true. I was imagining post scarcity. No. This is this <laughs> is this is seven months from now. The proliferation well, yeah, no, of that, robot servants. Fuck that one percent shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Against. Okay. All right. I, we're, uh, me and Josh are still for it. <laughs> I want mine to look like Katy Perry. <laughs> oh, God. Really? Yeah. That's the best you can do? With the whipped cream huh? cannons? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Katy Perry, exactly. is, that's the best you can do. That'd be great for I mean, chocolate. what's wrong with Katy Perry? <sighs> and I can, I can turn the sound off. Oh. You know, as a robot. <laughs> Mute Katy Perry? Yeah. Hmm. You may have lost me with the Katy Perry thing. <laughs> well, Next issue. Oh, hold on, hold on. You cast a judgment. Who you won't fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, K Katy, I'm annoyed by Katy Perry specifically. Like, if it was another person who looked vaguely like her but was not her, I'd be more okay, okay. with that. You're just, you're just upset by a shitty pop music artist. Yes. So if it okay. were Zoe Deschanel, that'd be fine. I'm more, like Perry, I'm more fine with, yeah, I'm not a star fucker. Like, I'm not into, like, I don't ever look at, like, a celebrity and think, like, that is so hot. Like, I just, I'm not into that at all. If there was one, it would be, like, Sofia Vergara. Vergara. I slur, <laughs> slur through it. See, she's so hot that I, <laughs> Modern Family, that. Sophia. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I think she's, like, supernaturally beautiful, but the. I mean, she's, right. I don't know. She is. It's the computers. Right, right. <laughs> but maybe that, I don't know. I st See, I still, I'm not, I still don't get worked up. I still don't really care. Like, I don't know. All right. I, I don't know. Um, if you want to get more upset for me, it's probably still Britney Spears. Just what? from when I was in high school. <laughs> I know she's old. She's I don't not care. that old. Well, your robot can be, you know, whatever age Britney Spears you want. I, dude, Britney right. Spears is my age. Like Britney, <laughs> yeah, Britney yeah. Spears now, no. Britney Spears, uh, you know, when she's wearing the schoolgirl outfit. Okay. Yeah, her. it's just the idea. When she's hitting you, baby, one more time. I'm uh, really more of an oops, I did it again so, uh, era. Two, <laughs> two, so the Jimmy Curve's final take on robot sex slaves is two. We'll, we, we would like to place an order for two pop stars and one nondescript. <laughs> The next issue is telepathy. <clears throat> Human telepathy. Andrew Hannes That's says crazy. no. No way. That's insane. Yeah? Yeah. Isn't no. Twitter already a step towards it? 
in a way. Yeah. I feel like the internet is really just a way to read each other's thoughts in a sense. But right now it's still somewhat controlled. Right. But fucking like yeah. every day I see a story where somebody's like, ah, my shit got out onto the internet and I didn't want it to. Like You, you put ha- it there. You put it there and you had those <laughs> thoughts. Didn't get you stolen know. from your house. I feel like we're trending towards just total right. telepathy. Well, like the Google Glass or whatever, like. If everybody has that shit. I don't know what that is. You don't? What is that? Computer glasses. Yeah, oh. it's uh, glasses that, it's a screen that basically, in your vision, you can take a picture, a video, you can message someone, you can call them on your glasses. You yeah. Can, yeah. The, the heads up It's display. basically your phone in your glasses. I'm with, I'm with Andrew. I am anti-telepathy. My thoughts are my own. See, uh, what I feel like people, what I feel like people think of when they think of telepathy is like, oh, I'm going to hear all these other people's weird thoughts. Like, I don't think that's true. I think people are fucking boring. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Like, I feel like you would be amazed how banal, like everyone's inner monologue was. <laughs> Dory makes you sad. <laughs> Joshua, telepathy. Um, I'm for it as long as I'm the only one that can do it. Nice. Yeah. So you're for you being a superhero. Yep. Yeah, that. <laughs> That's a different question, but okay. All right. Josh we'll get you the wheelchair and we don't even have to shave your head. <laughs> <laughs> the Jimmy Curve is for select telepathy. I agree. As long as Josh only uses it not for good or evil, but for profit. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Which right. is like good in Josh's libertarian world, right? I would just use it to not argue with my wife as much. <laughs> <laughs> I could actually tell her what she wants to hear. There you go. You got another one? I do. I have a few. Uh, this is controversial. Mm. More guns. Uh, so we're thinking in 2015, there are, uh, the guns we know, or are these like future guns, like laser guns. Mm. Yeah, mm. just more guns that we know. Phasers, more guns out on the streets. You know, just guns that we know. Right. Just uh, start. What do you think? Um, yes, I'm for more guns. Why? I think everybody should have a gun. Why? Um, you know, just. To make you feel good about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> to be a big man. Yeah. <laughs> to be like, hey, check out my gun. So all those so all those weird dudes who are ogling me in the gym at the locker room, like if I'm if I'm packing, you know, yeah. heat. Mm-hmm. Like maybe I've got something to You could pull yeah. out your piece and yeah. and your gun too. <laughs> oh. That's right. Yeah, but where are all the naked guys supposed to hold their guns? Locker. Where do you think? Keister in it. <laughs> or is this some sort of future like RoboCop type deal where everyone's got like mechanical leg implants and then the gun just like comes out of like your leg holster? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure if we're there yet. Mm-hmm. All right. 2015. Leg holster is 2016. Smo- Smokehouse, where are you guys at on guns? I love guns. I'm all for guns. I'm against guns. Oh, fuck guns. Shut up, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, Why a, we bring you? a part of me would love to sort of do like this magic trick where we all get transported into a, a more feudal type society mm-hmm. with like swords and like lances on horseback. Like, I think that was the way to go. I'm even cool with bow and arrows. Like, I feel like guns makes it too easy. Right. The, only if it's like the old style bow and arrow, not the compact bows that they have right like i want i want a weird combination of technologies where there's like our weapons are like swords and bow and arrows but we still have iphone (laughs) sixes i feel like that would be i feel like that's the ticket to like a happy society i mean duels we need duels with swords not guns well for sure i can't remember the comedian he made a joke about how when they you know everyone the right to bear arms when they made that that was when you know you had the musket that you had to reload. Right. They didn't mean fucking... There's a lot of people. Yeah. Assault sh- rifles. They didn't mean machine guns that shoot, you know, 35 bullets in a second. Or right. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, like, it, it would be... I Less guns means less gun deaths. Like, that's just math. So I'm against guns. That's but, true. 
But a big part of the reason uh, that more – well, like what people don't think about is that the more guns means more gun deaths. Like the fact that like when an individual owns a gun, it does make them specifically more statistically likely to die from a gunshot. Because yeah. they have a but, gun. Right. Yeah, but <laughs> if you have a swimming you pool, take, you're more people, likely to drown. Yeah, yeah, but, but, well, yeah, but that's what people don't think about is that most of that difference isn't made up because you're, like, you're more likely to get into a conflict. It means you're more likely to turn the gun on yourself just by its presence in your like – Su suicides are more prevalent than homicides with guns. Is that true? That is that is a fact, and I know there it because it was on Cracked.com. <laughs> there are more suicides than homicides with guns in the United States. Could that? Yeah. Can I just play devil's advocate really quick? Uh, guns are really good at killing people, right? <laughs> so if you use a gun to commit suicide, you're going to get the job done, right? Whereas if you use pills or something... Like, that might not work. Mm -hmm. That was exactly my point. <laughs> more guns <laughs> means more people committing suicide, and the main thing we need is less people. Well, Dorothy makes you sad. It's going to be a lot of that this episode. <laughs> so, it's, <laughs> so it's guns all around. Everyone likes yeah. guns. Except for, for Andrew. I, Except and Andrew. me. And I'm with Andrew. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like guns. I don't like them. You I, don't, don't, I, don't get, I don't understand. You don't like to shoot? Uh, you ever target shoot before? Yeah, I've gone. I've gone skeet shooting. And there you go. It was my, fun, was it not? My wife's parents <laughs> are like big skeet shooters. Right, right that shit's uh, fun. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it combines my love of loud noises with my love of destroying things. Right. But I don't know that that's good. <laughs> like, I don't need it. I don't need that in my life. It, you know, here's my kind of take on guns. Even if you like them. That doesn't mean it's good for you. It's like, yeah, I like booze, but if if like all the booze just magically vanished from the world, that would be a good thing for me. <laughs> I, like, I don't want that to happen. But again, that's not a great sort of thing. I, I I'm fine with it. I don't think we need guns. I don't see what good they're doing. But we can't get rid of the idea of guns. Like that's in the we can in this magical hypothetical game. Okay. So no one will come up with guns in the future if we don't have them. Like, if we get rid of the notion of guns, that well, idea won't creep into... We're just... I think what we're saying is there's going to be more guns one way or the other. Is that good or bad? I think it's bad. Well, maybe not. I mean, you never know what's going to happen. You, got, you know what I mean? Like, in the last few years, like... It's hard as shit to even buy bullets for a gun. You can get a gun. You can't True. buy no damn bullets for it, though. You know? A real expensive bat. <laughs> you got another one this is a prediction <clears throat> tom cruise will denounce scientology the caveat is he becomes seventh day adventist nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah for it i'm for that for it <laughs> yep for okay. it all around will he and jump on the sofa again then the jimmy curve becomes the new leading cult and replaces scientology after it falls apart Against it. That sounds like a lot of responsibility. A lot of work. I, I don't know that I can shoulder that burden. I, 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 All right. I, I can't bear your cross, world. Let me finish. And if Jimmy does not like that, <laughs> Joshua will have his own spin-off show, which will become the religion that replaces Scientology. As long as you are the deity, I will follow you. God bless you, my son. Lead me into the light. <laughs> God bless you. Yeah, I'm not... Not groveling to Josh or Super Mutants. Will, what do you think about either Josh or me being a deity? Fuck you! <laughs> so, answered for you with a drop. <laughs> uh, Josh is a god for it. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. This is just, again, this is just a slightly off topic question. Can you make me a little plastic, like, red button with that sound clip <laughs> so that I can just walk around with it and, like. And, like, a megaphone strapped <laughs> yeah. to your back. <laughs> like those easy Fuck buttons. You. Or Fuck, you. Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck <laughs> you. Well, that was easy. Uh, I've got just one last one here, really quick. Uh, nourishment pills. Mm. I.e. you can take one pill and then you don't have to eat. You get all the food and all the sustenance you need out of that pill. Mm, it doesn't sound... Does it taste good? <laughs> don't... Hey, Kent, don't give me a hand signal. I'm against, I'm against that. Kent gave me a thumbs down. I didn't down. want to interrupt you, but I'm totally against it. I love yeah. eating. 
Yeah. Uh, I like the process. I'm 100% delicious. with you. All food um, is wonderful. Uh, uh, lettuce. Dilbert uh, cartoonist Scott Adams mm. at one point uh, got himself into the food industry with the idea of creating a product somewhat like this. It was not a pill, uh, but it was just like the idea of creating like a burrito that was just one food item that gives you all of the necessary nutrients you would need in your day. Like right. you could just, it's just basically human chow. So you right. could just eat this and that would be like nutritionally valid and everything that you would need. Well, sure. It's a burrito. And he called it uh, a <laughs> dill burrito. <laughs> right. Well, that's, a, that's a different thing. That's closer to like sort of the gruel they were eating in the matrix. Like it's sort of a tasteless flavorless <laughs> substance. Oh, this is different. It, this is, it came in a variety of flavors. Jimmy. <laughs> this is different. This is like, you just take one pill and like you don't have to eat, but you get to be healthy. <clears throat> like you're completely in shape at the end of the year by just living off of these pills. That's a new twist. I still wouldn't do it though. I like eating. I, I like eating, man. I don't have. I, I don't think I could do it. I, I fucking love eating so much. Exactly. Is yeah. there is there a way that we like? Could I become bulimic and still ultimately wind up healthy? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be done. Let's eat. Uh, Josh, one more real quick. One more. Um, live from the smokehouse. <laughs> For it. <laughs> Actually, let's get their take. I'm, uh, We're against <laughs> it. Yeah, I'm for it. <laughs> Kill smokehouse. I'm for it. Jesus Christ, Connus, are you just uh, disagreeing to be difficult? <laughs> <laughs> Who would do that? <laughs> I, uh, I will say... Uh, that I'm for Life from the Smokehouse as long as you have less listeners than we do. <laughs> no, no promises. promises. Uh, nice. I got one. Who, who, do, who says? I got one. What is it? Hoverboards. Mm, yes. 2015 is supposed to be the year of the hoverboard. I'll start us off for it. Uh, I'm going to say like a regular skateboard. I'm not going to do it without hurting myself, so irrelevant. <laughs> I don't want to see Will on a, on, on a hoverboard. We can get two of them for him, one on each foot. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, I want that like too. Skis, <laughs> like skis. You're like being drawn and quartered, though. <laughs> Listen, don't think about whether or not you would want to do it. Just think about all the YouTube videos you'd be watching oh, of it. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm for it then. Yeah. Well, do you guys see the fake? Hoverboard fails? The, Come on. The fake hoverboard commercial that came out on Tony April Hawk. Fool's? Or yeah, it was whatever. awesome. Yeah, people thought it. I was like, that is looks so <laughs> fucking fake. It, yeah, it was ridiculous. I think those videos would be called hoverboard fatalities. I don't think they <laughs> Yeah, people try crazy shit on a hoverboard, man. Well, people try crazy shit just on their feet. Is it yeah. like riding a bike where you can you can drink and ride your bike? Can you can you drink and just get like on that. your hoverboard? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're four hoverboards. Do I have to wear a seatbelt? See belt? now again, if like yeah. if a hoverboard, Does have a seat belt? if the hoverboard has like you know the the Google car ability to like drive itself home, like so you could just like slump your like. A passed out friend on his hoverboard <laughs> and just like send him on his way. That would be amazing. It'd actually be a lot easier for little girls to tow their drunk dads home on a mm. hoverboard. There's oh, no friction. Sad. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. Sad. Sorry. I did it this time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's do some news. Oh, shit. Joshua. 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 News. Hello, everybody. Oh, you want your GPS reports, Julia? All right, well, right after these Jaeger bombs. <laughs> uh, researchers at the University of Illinois say drinking at work might not be so bad. Um, uh, oh, I yes. love it so far. I've seen that. The, seen the researchers that. found that uh, a certain level of inebriation can help you be more creative. In the study, participants whose blood alcohol level was slightly under 0 .08 performed better in a creative task than their sober counterparts. Uh, the intoxicated group, however, underperformed when they were assigned with any task related to memory. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the researchers determined that a person's creative peak is reached when the person hits a blood alcohol content of 0.075%. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. Now, is cool. it, it, 
shit. So isn't isn't point, you guys are you maybe. guys are you guys are all the color commentator for Major League? I'm, just so you know, <laughs> 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 they don't call them the best in the business for nothing, folks. I want to know how many mai tais Will has to drink. Will can't afford a Before Mai can... Tai. <laughs> oh, bullshit. I've seen Will drink Mai Tais. A store I... brand mouthwash, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. I got back to Sam's Club, all right? And we're back on scope. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, like, this is funny because there are definitely some things that I feel like I do better with a couple of beers, like shoot pool. Right, mm -hmm. but you don't want to cross. Oh. Yeah, but you don't want to cross. You don't want to cross that. Oh, you don't want to. You want to. You don't want to peak that hill, and then uh, that's why the drinks are on a separate table from the mix board. <laughs> by the way, we're gonna try that one of these days. <laughs> and uh, and because if you get too drunk, then you you screw it up. But then I also know that with creative things, I have more fun doing them when I've had a couple of beers. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I'm better at them. Certainly uh doing comedy i know i uh do a little bit of stand up but i also do a lot of improv or i have done a lot of improv and i am not better when i've been drinking uh mm. it's it's more fun for me mm -hmm. it's actually more fun for the performers to be a little <laughs> fucked right. up and up on stage and like dicking around and having a great time but like ask yourself this when have you ever been sober and been a, been watching other people who are drunk do anything and you enjoyed it never that's never happened oh so they're not drinking at these shows the improv shows oh yeah the audience is i mean yeah sure 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 the audience is i'm oh. just saying in general at work like oh, okay it may mean. be perception that you think that you're being more creative when you're drunk but i don't know that, that you are well, well he said that this that they did research and the it showed that they actually were at a more certain good. level. You peak though. Like, there's a then after that you got to maintain. Yeah. This is one of those things though where I su I suspect that those people wanted to prove <laughs> that they were better researchers. That's the study you sign up for, right? With an open keg. Yeah. Like next they're gonna <laughs> next they're gonna try and prove that watching a little porn on your lunch break helps you do research. You know, <laughs> they'll get funding for that. Yeah, like, surprise! Like I do my best work while getting blowjobs. Like, no. <laughs> so you can't argue with the numbers. Uh, that's science. I'm all for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I like ruled it. on that. <laughs> you got another one? Yeah. Oh, hey, Snowflake, you think you're special? You ain't <laughs> shit. <laughs> you were looking right at Kent when you did that. Oh. <laughs> Is that Kent's Wait, nickname, Snowflake? Snowflake? I guess it is now, damn. Hey, What's uh, that, Kent? Looks like you are gonna grovel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a chemistry teacher, blogger, and assumed lifelong virgin, Andy <laughs> Bruning, has created a chart <laughs> which categorizes snowflakes into 39 different types. Oh, Jesus. Based wow. on uh, Japanese research, Bruning's uh, graphic logs 35 flakes and a combination of sleet, ice, hail, and a hydro, oh shit, <laughs> an hydro meteor uh, particle rounding out the rest. Uh, though it doesn't confirm every snowflake is unique, the 39 categories have a pretty impressive 121 more subtypes. The variety depends on temperature and humidity. Um, the uh, chemistry teacher writes on his blog, low humidity creates simpler shapes, while higher humidity creates more complex ones. All right. This can't lead to anything good. <laughs> I'm envisioning scenarios where, you know, when little kids in preschool are doing the deal where they cut snowflakes yeah. out of construction paper and hang them up on the wall, like... Now they're going to have to do like six months of field research to figure out <laughs> yeah. which fucking category their snowflakes are in or it's not going to. And like, I, and I'm envisioning like <clears throat> different snowy countries, like having Twitter wars, like our snowflakes category four. Yours are just <laughs> bullshit category 14 snowflakes. Like, fuck you, Sweden. I think Greenland will be talking a lot of shit. No one lives there. Uh, <laughs> I will say this. I did see the chart, and it's a pretty bomb-ass chart. <laughs> I, will, I will post uh, a link to it on Facebook because it's pretty 
neat. I, I like I, I just know for sure that like within like 10 years or 15 years, like a poster of like that chart of all the different uh, oh, no. like snowflakes is going to be in like every single dorm room in the country. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's going to replace the periodic table yeah. right next to dark side of the moon. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I, I guess I can't wait for the BuzzFeed article. Which snowflake type are oh, you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the cracked article that are only actually eight types of snowflakes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, snowflake myth debunked. Because oh. <laughs> I got a cracked to debunk my myths. What is it? There's a what, Snopes. There'll be a Snopes. Oh, oh no. Big fucking deal. Snowflakes. It, did it say what they were, what the types were labeled as? Like what mm. they were called, or is it just thirty nine different? On the chart, it does. Yeah, are they color coded? To is be it... honest with you, I did not do that <laughs> what, extensive of research. What research. would you, if you guys were labeling snowflakes, if you guys had come up with this chart, what would you use to differentiate them, or would you use like celebrities? Mm. You know, mm. numbers. Number. You just call straight numbers. Numbers. <laughs> 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 well, since I'm He's colorblind, I'm going to go with the, the, colors. The point of me asking the question <laughs> was to inspire a little creative comedy. You can't with... inspire me. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just use numbers? It's the most simple system. It totally makes sense. This guy's doing research I, on oh snowflakes. God. Why would I, you fuck it up with... I'd use emoji. I feel, I feel so bad about making that data crack now. I didn't realize he was in the room. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. He's not a person. You don't have to feel bad. Yeah, Andrew's not people. Wait, we you guys are talking about me? He's learning. I don't get it. I don't get your question. I mean, just use numbers. Numbers are fine. <laughs> There's only 39 of them, so you could use 26 letters, and then you know, 13 more that you'd have to label somehow. So where's the logic? Doesn't make it. Where's the logic? Doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> I'm gonna label mine by smells. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everybody wants to have them barbecue snowflakes. Yeah. And, <laughs> brew and coffee is yeah. what we got. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Let's do one more. Oh shit! I forgot. Edit this out. Hang on. My phone. Uh, here, I'll just I'll I'll play some, I'll play some random drops while you're doing that. I'm no, a here. janitor who farts a lot. Do you happen to know the Bernoulli equation? All right, Ra <laughs> random drops done. Apparently, diamonds aren't a guy's best friend. Uh. <laughs> I was waiting for this one. Not Neil Diamond's son, but prolific thespian and comedian <laughs> Dustin Diamond, best known for his role on Saved by the Bell, was arrested in Wisconsin uh, last Friday for stabbing a dude. <laughs> Uh, Diamond's uh, fun came to a screeching halt. <laughs> he did it! He did it! Oh. When he was arrested for possession of a switchblade that apparently cuts like diamonds, oh. reckless endangerment in the first degree, and carrying a concealed weapon. Uh, Diamond 37 allegedly stabbed the man after getting into an argument late Christmas evening at uh, a Grand Avenue saloon in Wisconsin. Uh, he is claiming self-defense and reportedly seeking private counsel. Dustin Diamond was saved by the bail, though. Oh. That was set at $10,000. Go fuck yourself. I just did comedy. <laughs> well, you know, Dustin Diamond has all that saved by the bell fuck you money. So. Right. right. Did he stab the guy who played Belding? That's the only <laughs> other person. I, don't, I, don't. I, don't. I know that I, I, did anybody watch Saved by the Bell, or am yeah. I the only one old enough? I oh, did. no. I saw it, but, like, I didn't like it when I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. And I, it's weird. It was, it seemed like, I liked cartoons. Like, right. I got mad that they were doing live action <laughs> shit <laughs> during my cartoon time. But, but it kind of was a cartoon. It was weird. It's gotta be rough for those guys who were, who are so typecast as such an unlikable person. Like, I know that, <laughs> I remember, I remember watching Jaleel White mm. fight his way out of mm. Urkel. Urkeldom. Like, yeah. he would always. Which he never did. He never did. He would always, he would always uh, show up on those, uh, like, celebrity basketball games and shit that MTV would have. Like, he yeah. was always in those, and he was always just like. Well, he was Stefan. Yeah, then. Stefan Urkel. Right, yeah. right, right. That wasn't Urkel. It was his other persona. I just, you know those guys thought that that was going to be their springboard <laughs> yes. into leading man 
like action movies and stuff and it just never happened that's got it'd make you want to stab a guy like the older brother in the wonder years jaleel white People specifically <laughs> as a person i don't know who that is i don't either the guy who played wayne on the wonder <clears throat> years like people walk up to him on the street to this day and they're just like you're an asshole and he's like oh, I, oh the I brother twelve hundred dollars for that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was worth it i don't know if you know this i assume you don't because you're not me <laughs> uh, but Jaleel White specifically got himself a fantastic uh, secondary career as a voice actor, most famously doing the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, really? In, oh. Uh, like, all of the terrible games where Sonic talks. Oh, wow. So he landed on his feet. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I don't know that that's landing on your feet. I mean, that's working. It's making fucking a living. Yeah. There's a lot of Sonic properties, though. He's probably doing okay. He probably also has his own podcast, I'm guessing. And he's probably still working on that Urkel money. So, I I don't know how much those guys made for that. I'm guessing they did okay. Like I'm guessing I'm guessing Dustin Diamond legitimately did pretty well. From he was on yeah, Saved but, by the Bell for a long time. Right. But I bet Dustin Diamond doesn't have a lot of money left over because if he had money, he wouldn't be touring as a stand-up comedian. Like right. that's what you do when you're in entertainment when you're famous enough to be a draw. But don't right. not not, and, like, and, not famous enough to be in movies. And yeah. they and they fuck kids too. Like they, they Wait, take whoa, advantage whoa, of kids. Whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> no, no, I thought like, you were saying talking about Corey Feldman. Over <laughs> they screw kids over. Okay. Sorry. Uh, like Jeez. I remember. Well, I just thought of this thing. I remember hearing. Um, what's his name played Wesley Crusher on the Next Generation. Uh, Will Wheaton. Will, Will, Will Wheaton. Wheaton. Will Wheaton. I heard Will Wheaton tell a story one time about how one year they offered to give his character a promotion instead of him a raise, <laughs> and he was, and that's why he left the show for a period of time. And they were, good, and good they had choice. to write a storyline in where his character went to Starfleet Academy for like a full season or something. Cause Wesley's uh, on vacation. He was like, "Fuck you! That is low well, shit." And, and like. When you're a kid actor, doesn't the money go to the parents? Yeah, there's some deal like that, but, I mean, a lot of them still have what? Okay, that thing you just described where they offered to give his yeah. Uh, yeah, character. character a promotion. I've heard, like, the Simpsons writers oh. describe basically, like, Fox doing the same thing to them, except that they gave them, like, a credit bump in lieu of, like, a raise. Mm. Where it's like, now you're an executive producer. <laughs> right, they give him a title. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And the, that, but except that they all fell for it. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who played Urkel actually was a host uh, on a game show on Sci Fi Network called Blackout. I don't know if you ever oh, yeah. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> and now the premise of the, the, of the game show is, right, they have three contestants, right, and they put them in a, a, a room where you can't see anything. It's totally, completely blacked out. And they have to like feel stuff and taste stuff and, and figure out where they figure at. out what it is. And if if whoever guessed the least right, they put them out and they and they basically by telling you they drop you into a what looks like a bottomless pit. Like the floor just <laughs> goes out from underneath them. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> it was pretty good. I don't know if it's still on. And or not. Jaleel White hosted that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was like cool. night vision cameras, so you could see yeah, like these people like walking around trying to find shit and they're just running into stuff that's just I mean, urkel's revenge that's way better than stabbing a guy maybe <laughs> maybe i'm too sensitive but i feel like there would have to be like some disability group who would get get up in arms about like oh you're just gonna do a tv show that's blind for a day i'm, go I'm blind yourself. every day <laughs> yeah oh it's so funny to see the people freak out you know because they put like uh bear, like a bucket full of hair brushes in there and people would like freak out like they they could quit they wouldn't they wouldn't even do it sometimes they mm. they freak out and cry a bucket full of hair brushes? well because sometimes it's animals and shit like yeah, right they, they freak you out like sometimes sometimes you'll go in there and there'll be a table full of snakes or whatever <laughs> right. and like or you go in there and it's just like a table set up for okay. dinner and that's it, just like food and shit. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be you don't even know. You just you go in there and you're like, uh, what am I touching? I don't know. I'm definitely getting drunk and watching that show. That's that's awesome. It's gonna be. We're gonna do that after this. Show. <laughs> that's where we're going from here. I yeah. Well, too bad for uh, Dustin Diamond. I know that Dustin Diamond. Here's a. I, he did Saved by the Bell. Long after everyone, like the rest of the original cast, had left. Right. Well, mm -hmm. he did the new class. He stayed when every yes. the rest of the original cast left. That to me says, yeah, he was. That's right, because he was like the uh, 
he uh what is it called we're like you're a student that watches all the other students in the uh perv uh, hall monitor <laughs> yeah, no, uh, <laughs> no um perv. shit perv <laughs> boom nailed it <laughs> yeah, yeah basically <laughs> No, he was uh, he was like a tutor or something. Yeah, all right. I'm trying I, I to think. I think I thought I, I vaguely remember it. I thought in the context of the show, he was like Mr. Belding's assistant or something. After that, well, like when you live in um, like a dorm, they have like one person that stays. There you go. That's what he was in the show. I think is his stand up any good? Like, is has anybody ever familiar with Dustin Diamond's stand up? I didn't even know he was doing stand up. Yeah, yeah, he was. He either. did the Funny Bone in Omaha. Like, oh last Jesus! Year. I seen he tried to fight. The guy from the biggest lo- or the celebrity, uh, club? oh, in, club. Ce- celebrity, in celebrity, I saw him in, in celebrity boxing. He fought yes. Danny Bonaduce. That's yes, true, yes, too. He did. <laughs> but after that, he got on Celebrity That's Fit insane. Club. <laughs> and you know, have you ever seen that show? Uh, uh-uh. there's like this, uh, this really built black dude that's like a used to be a drill and uh drill sergeant instructor yeah yeah and you know dustin diamond's like man fuck you i'll fight you or whatever and everybody's like no <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna kill you yeah. that guy's <laughs> that guy obviously had some anger built up i mean yeah I, I, fuck you lisa turtle that's right <laughs> was oh her last God, name Lark turtle Morgies. yeah lisa yeah. turtle was the character's name wow <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, everybody. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed hanging out with all of us. We had a good time here today. Check out Live from the Smokehouse, broadcasting on YouTube. They have their own YouTube page. Yep. Is it Live from the Smokehouse? Live from the Smokehouse? Yes, it's uh, YouTube.com slash Smokehouse Podcast. YouTube.com slash Smokehouse Podcast. You guys got a Facebook page. That everyone can check out. Yep. Uh, live from the Smokehouse. What's the Twitter handle? At Smokehouse Live. Smokehouse Live. At can we do can we do like a like a Budweiser Frogs deal where we bounce down the line with at Smokehouse Live at Smokehouse Live All one right. two three go at uh, Smokehouse Live. <laughs> God, that was the most entertaining thing for me that happened on <laughs> the show today. Yeah, no one's gonna. No one. It one's, sounded perfect too. <laughs> It was like so flawless. Good. We've been practicing that. One more time. Uh, Smokehouse. Live. Now, now, say your bit when I point to you. Smokehouse. Live. <laughs> At. I'm not playing your games. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. Andrew. Re- Data can feel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is a real boy. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I'm Data? <laughs> God. All right, that's been the show. Hey, uh, thanks for tuning. Do we have any more plugs? Come see Josh at the Missing Kitten Show. Come see me at the back line the third Thursday of every month. Uh, this has been the Jimmy Curve for Joshua Vossler. Snowflakes. Will Doherty. Hail Baphomet. W- Andrew Hannes. Hey. Daniel Young. Goodbye, everybody. Kent Maslowski. Live. I am Jimmy Putnam <laughs> saying thank you and good night. Here is another song from my college band.
I want pork 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 broccoli. <laughs>